St. Francis's curse shares a common thread to the different paranormal subjects we've been discussing. Death comes swiftly. As always, I'm Linnea Quigley, and you're watching Paranormal Truth. Hello, my name is Patrick Allen, and this is Linnea Quigley's Paranormal Truth, a series of films where we delve into the paranormal world of the unknown. In this episode, we are going to investigate the scary world of the Curse of St. Francis and the Haunted Clown Motel. My mother awakened me. There was water coming in our window of the house. We were in bed, asleep. It was about 1.30 or so in the morning. And the smell was so terrible that I never have forgotten what the smell was like. My parents and my older brother, who was 17 at the time, and I was 13, we went out the doors of the house because it was starting to move from the water. And uh, my parents and brother went out the front door into the flow of the water. I went out the back door into the rush of the water and it took me real rapidly over to the main flow of it. When I was washed down to Santa Paula, which is about 10 miles south or east of us, uh, and left in a pile of debris with two large logs across my legs, but I could see on either side going down. And at times, the water would take me way down. I don't know what was happening. I'd hold my breath and I could, I'd go way up the other side. So where, where it was and what was happening there, I don't know. But I could see automobile lights on both highways. We were in bed asleep and we heard a loud, I think the noise was kind of a roar. Oh, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. I had perfect confidence that I was going to get out. That's what I told my mother before we left the house. And she said, oh, you foolish child, you can't. And I emphatically repeated it that I was going to get out, and I knew I was, and I wasn't hurt. 11.57 p.m. on the 12th of March, 1928, the normally peaceful San Francisquito Canyon began to rumble. It wasn't an earthquake. The St. Francis Dam had failed. While the 120-foot-high wave may have washed the bodies of the 431 people in its path out to sea, their spirits have never left, and that was only the beginning of the deaths that have resulted from the curse of St. Francis. And I know Thelma's whole family were killed, and she was, I think she was taken down the flood for quite a ways before she caught on to a tree. I was trapped with logs across my legs. And I worked all day long and got one log off, but I couldn't get the other one off my leg. So I was there till four o'clock. And I saw two figures way up lake, way up the river, I mean, from Fillmore Way. And I kept yelling and yelling, help, help. And they thought they heard somebody. So they kept on coming.
I don't know why I something pushed me to the other door. I don't know. The only thing I could say is that dear Lord was watching out after me because I knew I was going to get out. An investigation into the disaster concluded that it had been caused primarily by the unsuitability of the San Francisco rock for supporting a dam and a reservoir. Mulholland was cleared of all charges regarding the dam failure. Nevertheless, the disaster ruined his reputation and ended his career. No, I don't blame Mulholland. I just thought that he just did not know enough and he was trying to help by getting, by putting a dam in because we needed water. <laughs> I never judged him. I knew he was the builder of the dam and everything, but there was a weak side on, on it, and he never should have put the dam there. I never ever talked about it. Well, it brings tears to my eyes. The St. Francis Dam was completed in 1926 in San Francisco Canyon, about 30 miles or 50 kilometers northwest of Los Angeles, under the supervision of William Mulholland, manager and chief engineer of the Los Angeles Bureau of Waterworks and Supply. The dam's purpose was to provide a reservoir for the Los Angeles Owens River Aqueduct. Several cracks and leaks were observed in the dam and its abutments, but Mulholland dismissed these as normal. After the reservoir was filled to capacity for the first time on March 7, 1928, he inspected the dam and proclaimed it safe. Just before midnight on March 12th, however, the dam's massive concrete wall collapsed, sending billions of gallons of water rushing down the canyon towards the Pacific Ocean. The towns of Castiac Junction, Fillmore, Bardsdale, and Peru were flooded and more than 1,000 houses were damaged or destroyed. The official death toll was estimated to be 450, but the number killed was likely higher. Many victims' bodies were never discovered, and the numerous transient farm workers and illegal immigrants who perished in the flood were never accounted for in official statistics. Numbers of internment workers met their deaths in the flood waters. Visitors who have braved this place after dark say that many flood victims have remained behind. According to reports, strange things occur here at night, especially when it's foggy. Eerie voices are sometimes heard. People are touched, pushed, and caressed by invisible hands. And on other occasions, shadowy forms are seen walking in the mist, and when approached, they always vanish. Who are these mysterious apparitions? Are they the doomed workers who perished in the flood? Or could they be the spirits of victims whose bodies have not yet been discovered? That particular mystery remains unsolved. It all started in 1985 when Leona and Leroy David built this motel in memory of their father, Clarence David, who died in the Belmont Mine Fire and is buried at the old Tanapa Cemetery right next door. Their father, who was a clown lover, left a collection of 150 clowns in his home, which they decided to use as the theme and focal point of their motel, in memory of their father. The Clown Motel was named America's Scariest Motel, due to its clown theme and proximity to the cemetery, where many miners were laid to rest due to the Tanapa Belmont Mine Fire of 1911. Today, our motel offers a little bit of something for everyone. It is home to over 2,000 clowns from every era and corner of the earth. Staying at the Clown Motel is a unique experience. All 31 of our rooms feature two to three custom clown art paintings, along with air conditioning, heating, a refrigerator, and more. The Clown Motel is an experience you'll never forget. We'll do everything to make your stay comfortable, 
But what happens after dark is out of our hands. We are hitting the road and heading to Tonopah, Nevada. We brought... We brought David from the Lost Boys what? with us <laughs> for this weekend. It's my Chinese food. It's good, dude. Half place. Since I was a little kid, I've loved horror movies. I remember the first time I watched It and was terrified of Tim Curry's Pennywise. So when we booked this location that we were minutes away from, I was beyond pumped. The infamous Clown Motel. As soon as you walk inside the lobby, there's hundreds of clowns staring at you. Pretty eerie and awesome feeling. All these clown dolls and toys were donated to the clown motel, so all these figurines have a story to tell. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is fucking awesome. And the fact that we got, you know, access to investigate the lobby, and then we're gonna do the cemetery. Yeah, it's can't ask for something better than that, you know? Correct. You guys ready? I am so excited. Like, excited and actually nervous. It's really, really eerie. This guy makes me feel uneasy. Charlie, we're gonna do a spirit box session with you. We hope you, uh, Interact with us. Should I sit down? Or? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh my god. What was that? Did it say hello? It sounded like it or said hello, huh? I, I don't know, help or hello. Do you need help? Maybe are you from the cemetery? It's not like I said I know. I don't like it back here in the dark. Like at all. Yeah, I'm not I'm feeling a weird vibe here every time I come in here. Give us a sign that you're here. Whoa. That was, a, that was a, a guy for sure. Who's here with us? I heard, I heard that. Did you hear that? I heard tapping. Are you attached to one of these to toy clowns here? Oh my god. Oh my I said god. yes. Oh my god, Victor. Oh wow, god. that creeped me out. Oh my god. Wait, 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 Ooh. wait, wait, wait. I feel like it's swarming us around. It is because when she, you guys are standing over there, I heard taps behind her over there. Yeah. Oh, my god, yeah. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It said yeah. Yeah. Look, it's right there. This one's bigger. Now we're going to move into the back. Someone back here? Whoa. 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 
Who's back here? I heard a laugh. I swear. Hello? Are you hiding back here? I just heard you laughing. Show yourself. There it is. Oh my god. She has got it? Yeah, I got it. He popped off for like a split second. I got it. Show yourself. Don't be afraid. Were you the one I just heard laughing? It looked small. It did, huh? Child. What the hell is it? Dude, there's It's coming out? You. Wait, come here. No, no, you don't move. Oh my god. What happened? What happened? It's on you. It's on me? Something it's is on, on you. your shoulder. My right side or left? That side. It would be to your left side. No, his no, right. To the right side. Dude, right it's there, just dude. chilling on. It just disappeared. We caught it. Oh my Maybe god. That's what's scratching around here. It's, it's scratching. off you. It's off you. Hey. Wow. Dude, as soon as I turned it on. Who are you? Are you the one on my shoulder? You didn't get on my shoulder again. There it is, there <gasps> it is. Again? It's just yes, chilling. I just said it too. Oh, dude. Did you feel something? And I'm getting the chills too right now. What's your name? Dude. I think it said boy. Are you a boy? I think it said done. Like a female. It was a female. I said done. Are you done with us? There it is. There it is. Again there. on me? Come back. Right there. It's on me? Oh, yeah. yeah it's right yeah. on you. Who's on it's me? It's leaning it's on, on you. Yeah. Did you hear that? In I heard over I here. I heard it. But I don't want to like move or anything. Who's on me? Oh, my God. Who's on top of me? What's your name? Whatever it is, it's attaching to you, not to us. I mean, at least that I am not ex feeling anything. You guys haven't been hearing what I'm hearing, huh? No. Can you give me your name? What? Dude, it, it, said said it. it said a name, something. It said a name, but I yeah. didn't understand it. And guys, you see? Oh, oh there it it's is. back on you. Talk to it more. How old are you? It's on you your thing, dude. Right help, on you, dude. Help. You said help. What? Dude, now it's on the other. There's two of them. Oh my god, Victor. On my, on my shoulders? Yes. yes. Two of them. <laughs> dude, I keep hearing shit behind me, too. It's probably it's a. It's like voices. What? The Clown Motel did not disappoint. Now I see why they call it the creepiest motel in America. The cemetery, which can be seen from some of the clown motel's rooms, is considered equally or perhaps more haunted than the motel itself. It closed only 10 years after opening when the increasing number of dead outnumbered the plots the cemetery had to offer. Inside its gates lay 300 deceased. Among them are the victims of a mysterious Tanapa plague, which swept through the area in 1902, 14 miners who died in a fire in 1911, and the pioneer residents who spent their years building. We came across this abandoned motel, which I gotta say gave me Bates Motel vibes. We were all on edge venturing through this motel, so I felt it was the perfect time to give Alex a little scare. <laughs> no. Dude. <laughs> oh my god, I got scared. 
Time was getting closer for us to investigate the old Tonopah Cemetery, which has been around since 1901 and was filled up in 1911. This graveyard has 17 of the miners that passed away in the Belmont Mine Fire that took place in 1911, which reopened and closed again in 1939 due to another fire. There's also people buried here that died from the Tonopah Plague. There's also a section of deceased kids, which makes it sad. Check this out. Can you get closer? Look at that. Look at this. Oh my. This is so sad. See? Look at this. And and it's you see how every every um, burial has a toy that even. Even in 2020, you still have people coming here and actually putting a small toy or yeah. something to um, honor the people that are the children or the toddlers or the teenagers that were buried here. See that? It's just really, really so sad. Infant. This one says infant also. Yeah. Infant buyers. Oh, this one's sad. This one? <laughs> well, I'm feeling like we're having some tec technical <laughs> difficulties with our... No, some, no. It was working. Okay. Look, I'm now we tested it out in the room, too. Everything's charged. What Let me just start by saying there was no one else inside or around the cemetery. When we first heard the whistling, we didn't know where it was coming from, but it sounded so close to us. We'll show you a little later where we believe the whistling was coming from, because it wasn't the last time we heard it. It's pretty cold out here, guys, tonight. I would say about um, 30 degrees, 35. Could you not? It's freezing. I think this is the sheriff, guys. This is the sheriff, guys. This guy was the sheriff of the town, and he got he got murdered. He got shot in the street, and uh, a lot of people were pretty upset about his his. Uh, what was that? His. Uh, what was that? Who's here? I swear I felt somebody right here next to me. Did you guys hear that? I swear it was right here. Right here. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. Guys, I kid you not, I'm talking about the sheriff right here and I heard somebody right next to me. Did you whistle right now? No, I did not. Remember how I mentioned the whistling? This was the second time Jasmine and I heard it as we were walking towards Alex. Watch and listen closely. Did you hear that? Yeah. 
In the 1800s, an invention was created for people who were scared to get buried alive. This long pipe connected to your mouth from inside your coffin leading to the outside of your grave to signal people that you were alive. I barely noticed. What? Is that for them to whistle when they're like still alive? Yeah. Dude, that's cre and they all have that. Dude, I didn't notice that. I that. Do you think that's what we heard? Dude, they all have They all have that. that. Dude, they all have They all have that. that. Okay, these guys are live recording. That was a lady. We just heard you. Can you give us your name? Okay, you heard. This is a, did she say Nicole? No, it was a guy. No, it was a guy. The first one was a girl. Can you speak, us, can you speak loud? So we can hear who you are? <laughs> So we can hear who you are? Oh my god, it said help me. Oh Did you hear that? I heard that. Oh dude, I got the chills and I'm freezing right now. It's crying. We're here, we can, we're gonna listen to you. I don't know why, dude, it sound like I said I'm crying. Yeah. Right? If there's anybody that wants to talk to us, so far, it's been like a male as we're walking down. Mm -hmm. Someone threw a rock at us over here. Right now? Yeah. Who threw that rock? Keep walking? You can follow us over here. I told you, someone's throwing rocks at us. The fuck was that, dude? Dude, it was like. Someone over here? Oh, oh shit, that one fucking scared me. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was that? I don't know, dude, but that one got me. What? Who's throwing shit? That one got me good. I think I'm gonna shit my ass in a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that one got me, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Look at it, look at it, look at it. Wait, wait, wait. You guys heard that, right? I heard that. Call me off. Who's here? Throw one more rock and we'll leave. You obviously don't want us in here. Victor, 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 Victor. So far, the Old Tonopah Cemetery is one of the most intense and active graveyards I've been to. The Clown Motel in the Old Tonopah Cemetery is finally off my bucket list and they both will leave a mark in my mind forever. I'm Alinea Quigley for Paranormal Truth.